Hello everyone, welcome to Unreal Engine 5. If you recently got this engine or have converted from 4 to 5, in this video I'll be showing you how to use your VR headset and how to set it up in order to be able to use it. Once you download your Unreal Engine 5 and open up either a new project or access this project when you open your engine through the launcher. What you want to look for is VR testing. You can see that this project is already open and it's named VR testing. It should be available by going to the launch a button here. And once it's ready, once you prompt it with the browser, you can either open it uh, if you already had it Open once before, if not, what you want to go, you just click on games and go to your virtual reality over here. And then once you click on that, you can name it whatever you want and then you can create a project. Since I already have done that, and when you do it, you will be given this project here. And the next thing what you want to do is go to your platforms and uh, make sure that, not platforms, but next to the platforms over here where you have three dots. It says VR preview. You can see that it's set to that, but you can't really do anything. It doesn't actually let you uh, click play. Even if you click Alt P as a shortcut, it won't uh, work. So what you want to do is go to your edit, project settings. And here at the top search bar, just type in VR. And if you scroll down, to make sure that everything is enabled. Start in VR the settings. Just make sure that it is enabled. If it is, then you can go ahead and close this off. And then the next thing what you want to do is go to editor preference. And in here, you want to do the same thing, you just type in VR. And over here it says enable VR mode auto entry. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And the message pops up says VR mode enables you to work on your project and virtual reality using motion controllers. This feature is still under development, so you may experience bugs or crashes while using it. So I'm going to click continue. And we're going to go ahead and uh, close this off. But uh, if you notice over here, it says toggle VR and it says shift V. You can uh, change that to something else and then uh, play this level in VR. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, shift P, here we go. Or play, or for preview. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. Now you can see that it changes the button over here. Once you've done that, next thing what you wanna do is go to your edit again and now go to your plugins and this is where it gets tricky uh, you might be a little bit confusing in the beginning trying to figure this out so what you want to do is step in vr again and scroll down depending on which headset you're using so if you have oculus this will be toggled on uh, if you don't using something else uh, you'd want to turn on your steam vr support uh, mine was disabled so once you enable that it will prompt you as usual with the message saying that uh, you need to restart your engine every time you enable any of the plugins. Once you do that and restart your engine, you will have your Steam VR showing up on your screen. I'll pull up mine real quick. I have two screens, so let me just drag it over to the screen. Right here. And I don't know why that opened up. And you can see that um, it's registering my headset, uh, one of the controllers, because it's currently charging, and one of my bases. So what you want to do is go back to these three dots again, and since it doesn't sh let you do the VR preview, you can do a standalone game. When you click on that, once your Steam VR is uh, open, and you can see that it says Steam VR Home. So you click on Standalone Game. 
And if I put my headset in now, you can see that it says VR testing. And now I have a big window and it's still loading up. Uh, maybe I can press F11. Here we go, F11. And now by moving my head. Okay, so now I am finally in the game. All right, so before I uh, jump into the key bindings, I was going to show you real quick this main page of the Pimax Vision 8KX uh, headset that I have. Uh, the only difference is I don't actually have the headset like these that come with the headset, but I think they could be purchased separately. Uh, I personally use my uh, wireless headset separately, and it actually fits just fine over the headset. It just takes time to set it up. You put the headset on first, then you do the, um, the headpiece uh, that's wireless, so it's easier for me to navigate and move, and that's actually not that uh, heavy, so I don't ever have any issues with the neck or any back problems or anything like that. I can actually wear this headset for hours if I want to. Uh, I've tested out other headset versions, and um, sometimes you get uh, foggy glasses, or your head or neck start to hurt or itches. Uh, I have never experienced with that. I've used it for many hours. Uh, game, I mean, yes, with the gameplay, if you have a lot of action games and things like that, when you move a lot, you might start sweating a little bit. But other than that, um, if you're stationary, then it's not as bad. But the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, it looks like they have some sort of sale going on for the next two days. And uh, regardless of the sale, really, you still get a better deal than when I purchased this uh, a few years ago. Uh, but the reason I'm even on this website was because I was trying to show you the controllers that I have. And hopefully one day I can switch to, they have under accessories, they have hand tracking module, which I do not currently possess or have but uh, one day I would like to uh, get my hands on it and I um, was wondering how I can preview their um, I know they have heads they should have the controllers here so I have the valve controllers I don't have the Vive controllers because that's what they were shown in the preview of that test game but this is a valve controllers So I'm currently on the Unreal Engine docs, and I am under set up the Steam VR input system. Uh, it says that, uh, well, the image itself shows the by default it is a Vive controllers. So I have to change it to uh, Valve. Okay, so let's uh, scroll down. Uh, before I actually do that, it says beginner here. So for some reason, when you click on that, uh, you get the 404 page now found. Uh, so I'm not sure what used to be there, or maybe they have not added anything there yet. Uh, but uh, step no number one, it says the new Steam VR input system is not compatible with existing projects, so it must be explicitly enabled to enable Steam VR, which I already showed you how to do that. Uh, so then the console variable, okay, so this is um, to for the console variables. So under the project settings, engine input bindings. So we're going to have to go there first and we're going to set up some action and axis mappings for the input actions that you want to handle. And um, it says tip here, while SteamVR is stop, you may also need to edit to remove the block catching the action manifest setting and generate for the Unreal Editor. So let's go ahead and see if we can get to this uh, binding section first. Okay, so I have exited out of the testing mode, so now it's in the Steam VR home. So I do apologize if you do hear the ambient sound over there with birds tripping or not. I, I can't tell if you guys can hear it or not, uh, but that's just a, a Steam VR home uh, ambient sound. Uh, once you get back to your editor mode, here you want to go to your edit project settings. And under here, you want to go to your engine and under your input. So let's go and scroll down, find input. I'm going to click on that. Uh, we're going to look for bindings. I don't know if we can. Uh... So over here, under bindings, we're going to add 
different array elements. So if we look at our action mapping over here, you can see that uh, we have grab left, grab right, trigger left. Uh, all of these are actually already here. So we have valve index. I think what's happening is it's uh, under default. Uh, it's under the vibe instead of valve. Maybe that's why it needs to be changed. Uh, so we'll have to look at that in a moment because clearly all the bindings are already here. And none of these stuff needs to be added. Trigger right, trigger left, which I was pressing earlier. And um, movement here. So we have some movement. Thumbstick X. If you click on that, you can see that it gives you uh, a different choice of what you can click on or choose. So I think everything is correct uh, here under the actual project. I'm going to go ahead and click on devices, then go to, this is under Steam by the way, and go to controller settings. Next you want to click on manage controller bindings. going to click on that. And now here it says, uh, Usually it has a particular game that you have, whatever you, you play, uh, but I'm going to go with this Team VR Home, so that's uh, what I think it currently is on. And what you want to do is choose that level VR testing. So you choose that, or it says default, you want to click on custom, and you want to click on edit this binding. Now once you get to this page here you can see that uh, there's nine main game actions we have toggle left toggle right spectator a yaw pitch and a field of view moving forward uh, to the right move up and then movement axis right y uh, you can choose each individual trigger to what they do so there is uh, different triggers, obviously the left and right trigger. And then um, I'm going to make sure that they're properly connected. Okay, so let's see if what we can do with these buttons. So by uh, selecting the joystick, which is uh, your thumb uh, controller, you have three different options. You have click, touch, and position. So currently we have the position where it says movement axis right. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is try to add the click one. So for controls that are physical buttons, this engages on press down, otherwise engage when a configurable threshold has been passed. So on click, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click, actually on touch, right? Because we wanna uh, touch it and then be able to move it. So we're gonna click on none. And since it's a right hand, I'm gonna see if the spectator move forward will work. So that will going to be our moving forward. And the one on the left, for the edit, we're going to do also touch. And this is one going to go from left to right. And this is going to be I think the proper option here would be I think access right Y and not just move right and yeah, but I'm not I'm sure so uh, also it says spectator I'm not sure what they mean by spectator um, trigger access right but we'll try to do movement axis right and see which one actually does work because I'm not on moving axis left. So I remember the position. This one did let me turn, uh, but it didn't let me uh, move anywhere. So we'll test these out. Uh, the buttons for, let's say, B button, we can do a button, right? And then here you have click or touch. 
So on the click of a B button, so the grip actually does has a grab, right? But let's see what else is available here. I don't think I'm going to be using any of these at the moment. Uh, I just understood that grip uh, has an actual uh, grab axis, right? So maybe we don't need to use a spectator for uh, the trigger. Oh, here we go. The trigger. That's the thing I was looking for, right? Trigger, trigger axis, right? So this is the pull. Trigger axis right, trigger axis left. So it seems like it's set properly for your trigger. Actually, I don't see that. Um, I don't understand why it's uh, repeated twice. Click, pull, trigger axis left. Let's see if that does anything. And trigger axis right. So save personal bindings. Save. I don't know if it needs to be uh, published to workshop, uh, but we're going to give it a quick test and see what's actually going to happen. Main game action. So there's few ed edits that have been done and then the system is a button there itself uh, for the system we can click on that and it's going to be a button let's see on a, yeah on a click menu toggle right and then we'll test that out see if the menu button will show up just out of curiosity how exactly the settings work so i'm gonna go ahead and resave this and we'll test it out. Okay, so that didn't work, but uh, as you can see that uh, it says Nav Mesh needs to be rebuilt. I'm gonna go ahead and click Edit, Project Settings. And under Engine, I'm gonna look for Navigate, Navigation System right here. And what we want to look for is allow client side navigation. So we're going to head click on that. And I'm going to close this. I'm going to click on play the level and see if that uh, message will go away. Let's see if that worked. So once you do that, once you enable the client side navigation, Unfortunately, when you do press the test, uh, it does not rebuild navigation system. So what you want to do is go to navigation mesh itself. And then over here, when you scroll all the way down, what you want to do is on the runtime, you want to force rebuild on load. Uh, mine was disabled, so I just enabled that. And um, yeah, so once you click on that, it would ask you to save the level which I did, and then you click on play. And then now it's going to do another run test. That's where it's going to rebuild the nav mesh. And then I'm going to press F11 for you guys to see a bigger screen. OK, so I'm finally in a level. You can see that on my left screen now, it doesn't show that the nav mesh needs to be rebuilt. And now if I were to click to move somewhere, it lets me move. Uh, I can't really grab anything yet, so I'll have to figure out uh, the controllers for that as well. But at least I can move around the room now. Let's get to this blocks of fire. This is a no teleport zone. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but um, pretty dark room over there. You can move around anywhere in this room now. Uh, I don't remember if I set up the pickup 
for the items. I don't think it register anything. Even to grab it, I can't grab anything. Yeah, it doesn't register that yet, so I'll have to definitely, oop, definitely have to work that around. And I'm assuming you can pick up this uh, ball, shoot it or something. Let's see. For some reason it doesn't always register my movement. Oh no, here we go, it works. I don't know why I just teleported. So if I'm standing here, I want to make sure I don't <laughs> punch my computer screen. I should be able to let go and throw it. Pretty cool. Alright, cool. It doesn't work. Now, there's no t like teleportation grabbing um, mechanics been set yet, but it will eventually be added. I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> secure my controllers because I don't want to throw them at my screen. That would be a big no-no. Or just across the room and lose it. So these valve controllers, they do come with the an extra support that actually holds your wrists and so you don't have to actually hold the controllers if you don't want to. Pretty cool. So I'm trying to secure it here right now. But yeah, if I get closer to it, uh, I'm, the way I'm grabbing it is just by simply uh, moving my hands, so my fingers. Uh, so if I release my hands from the controller, uh, I drop the cube and if I squeeze it, obviously you can pick it up. I want, yeah, you can pass it over. Oh, I thought I could. Come on, grab it. Here we go. So you kind of have to hold it close to each other. I don't know if you can just kind of throw it and then catch it. We'll try that real quick. It's very difficult to pick it up. Oh, great, now I can't grab it because it's beyond my floor. <laughs> but there is no um, a teleportation of the object, like if it's close by, you can't really just grab it, you have to have controller right on it. Oh, but I can pick up the gun now, and I can shoot it. Pretty cool. Let's pick this one up too. And then we can shoot. I can feel the vibration coming off of it when you shoot. Uh, when you shoot other objects, you, they can fly away. And then, um, also these pro projectiles, they can <laughs> hit some of these fire embers in the distance over there. But I'm afraid as soon as I move... So I can still move with the gun in my hand, which is really cool. I can't let it go, otherwise I'll drop it on the ground below my floor. <laughs> but yeah, you can still shoot it, pretty cool. And uh, I can turn around while holding the gun. Oh, look at that uh, lighting. That looks really cool. Uh, 4K resolution, not a single pixelation. Uh, this gun looks amazing just as the way it is. And the controllers too, actually. Like the colors of it and everything. And it looks like real, real controllers. So I can just turn around like this, grab the gun. And then move back this way. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will probably be messing around with this level a little bit more. I mean, there's really not much to it, but I'll have to figure out all the other controllers for the next video. And I set them up, and then hopefully import the settings to my current version of the game so I can uh, test this out in the open world and not in this enclosed environment with the horrible looking sky. Well, actually, you know what? The sky doesn't look too bad. It looks like, just like mine. Uh, it just doesn't have volumetric clouds, which are anyway horrible in my game. Uh, but yeah, you can shoot it out there beyond the, the walls. Hopefully I'm not gonna hit any of my neighbors. <laughs> but nonetheless, this is pretty cool. The guns look realistic in uh, VR. I mean, again, Definitely whoever has a chance to get a hands on the Pimax VR should definitely do it. And if you're watching video today, like right now, you literally have two days and like eight hours left um, for their sale to end, which is really great. I mean, I spent almost $2,000 when I bought my um, whole kit, so you'll be definitely saving quite a lot of money from two years ago uh, compared to today, the value of it. And, uh, definitely recommend their new wire that they have for the headset because 
uh, it's a little bit different than what their other one is. It's much lighter, and I, I think it has a longer distance, so you can be farther away as well. And it's lighter, and it performance-wise, it works much better as well. Um, but I haven't had any issues with either of them. It just uh, it so happened that uh, mine got damaged multiple times, and I had to replace it with this one instead. And it's definitely worth it. Now I'll send the link in the description of the video, so that way you guys can check it out. If not, you know, use whatever you got. But this is how you set up your VR headset if you're first time using Unreal Engine 5, or if you're converting from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. Everything is kind of set back on default, and you kind of have to do everything yourself. Um, that being said, if uh, you're new, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Pretty cool video is going to be coming out soon. Hopefully more in VR. And then um, I will actually do some game testings too. I'm sure you guys will be interested to see that. Because by the time I do my game with the VR setup and all that, it's going to be quite some time. But... There are games out there that's already available and can be tested, so I will definitely would like to play some action games with this. Once I get the second base, we can do some ninja karate stuff here and zombie games and things like that, shooting games. So, not or less, I'll see you guys in the next video. And next time, virtual spectator, YouTubers. <laughs>